Hello everyone and welcome back to another Specimen Saturday and today we are actually going to be looking at some of the physical specimens that I own. We have been doing a lot of work in Dr. Nami's little cove and we have especially been working with him in our zoo crafting series to build up our, our virtual coral cove for all of the fish that you guys supplied, which was so much fun. Over 500 fish got added into the cove. That was amazing. But we have needed coral for those fish because coral reefs often provide a lot of shelter, a lot of food. They attract a lot of the smaller fish, which attracts the bigger fish, which attracts the bigger fish. So they have kind of their own little ecosystem. Coral reefs are very important ecosystems. And I actually have a few pieces of coral that I can show to you guys. And just in case you might be confused, some people would look at these and they would go, oh, this looks like a rock. It looks like a mineral formation, doesn't it? And in a way, it is a mineral formation. It is made out of calcium carbonate, but that calcium carbonate was once upon a time the stiff, little little skeletal structure, if you could call it that, of the polyps. So polyps are what become coral. They're itty bitty tiny, itty bitty little things, and when a bunch of polyps get together and die off actually and leave their skeleton behind, that's what becomes this piece of coral right here. So what you're actually looking at right here is not a rock and it's not one creature, it is hundreds if not thousands of creatures that have worked together, that have died off, and have created this piece right here. So we're holding basically the ancestral remains of an entire community right here. This is sort of, um, you could look at it as a graveyard, or could, you could look at it a little bit more poetically as the legacy, the, the physical legacy of a whole bunch of tiny little polyps which are kind of related to jellyfish. They are a type of marine creature and like I said they're very very small and the way that they're able to build very big things like this and they're able to build very big amazing places in the world like the coral reefs you see like the Great Barrier Reef for example is time. So these pieces of coral take a very 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 long time to grow each piece, usually on average, coral takes about one centimeter to year to grow. So remember when we were talking about stalactites and stalagmites and their very slow growth? Well, coral has that same very slow growth, but stalactites and stalagmites grow simply from mineral reactions, drying on the pieces that they fall, like the water that carries the mineral falls and creates stalactites and stalagmites when it dries and leaves behind the mineral. This is not that case. This is actually the legacy of living creatures that have multiplied over time. Most types of coral are actually clones of each other. So there's a lot of coral out there that is built because these little itty bitty polyps, you can see like the individual structure in this piece especially. These itty bitty polyps will reproduce and make clones of themselves and that's why they often have like similar structures they'll just continually clone and clone and clone you can see how it kinda seemed to grow up from a focal point where one very enterprising polyp landed somewhere out there in the world and had its beneficial relationship with algae be successful enough that it was able to grow because each of these pieces of coral does not grow all by itself. Each of these pieces of coral, each polyp, I should say, has a beneficial relationship with algae. Each polyp within it, because they're soft bodied on the outside, these tiny little polyps, but each polyp within it will have a little single celled plankton, a little single celled algae, I mean that will be inside of it and those algae will release the nutrients that the coral needs, that the polyp needs to grow and thrive. So the way that these guys succeed at life is having that, that mutual relationship with algae. The algae lives inside of the polyp and when you'll notice most coral reefs are in shallow waters that's because the algae and the polyp will then take the sunlight 
and it will put the nutrients out that the polyp needs, and then the polyp will grow and kind of provides a little bit of shelter for the algae. And eventually the algae or the polyp die off and leave behind the calcium carbonate structure that was within, and that is how this is created. So a lot of what you see, these tiny little dots, imagine those tiny little dots with small little itty bitty Itty, itty bitty little like fleshy tentacles reaching out so that they could kind of sweep the the ocean currents and see what kind of tiny little bits of nutrients they could gather up on top of what they get from the algae and of course this is generalization because you can't just look at all of these and go oh these are coral they're the same thing they have similarities but each species of coral is unique and different unto itself so uh, this is kind of just like an overview of coral and you've got all sorts of different types, and that's related to all the different species. But I just found that really fascinating, is that I just really want you guys to take home the idea that when you're looking at a piece like this, you are not looking at a single individual. You are not looking at a rock. You are looking at the legacy of potentially thousands of years, if not millions of years, of these things growing very, very slowly, the legacy of a community that could fit in your hand. And I think that's absolutely amazing. I really do. A lot of the coral reefs out there grow so slowly that that's why any damage done by divers, any damage done by ships or trawling can completely destroy that community. It's going to take tens of thousands of years for some of those things to recover if they ever do. And that's pretty amazing. There's estimates that some of the coral reefs out there that have been around for a very long time, you can see all sorts of interesting formations in this one, but there are estimates that some of the coral reefs out there are over five, over 50 million, 50 million years old. And those coral reefs are basically ancient sites that have built up over time and provide shelter, structure, life in the shallow waters where they, they exist for all of our current marine animals. Well, not all of them, but you know, a good number of them. A single coral can help support up to 25% of the local marine life I once heard. And I'm not sure how accurate that is, but I think it's a good take home message. Just to remember how amazing these are. And that's also why I actually am very much against collecting coral. These pieces were given to me at least these big pieces especially. These pieces you tend to find just up on the, sh like the shore of the beach and many of them are very weathered. You can tell they're old. They're probably much older than I am by far. Well, clearly. But, you know, they might be older than... This one piece might be older than the entire history of the United States of America. Who knows how old these are? Like these little pieces right here. Remember, it is like holding a slag tide or a slag mite, so you're looking at hundreds of years of growth right here. And that's a very humbling thing. So that's exactly why I don't want you to rush out and try to get like coral specimens because you don't want them to be harvested by people who don't have that respect or knowledge or sense of value for the important role they have in ecosystems. But these pieces were given to me as a gift a long, long time ago, and I think that they're wonderful pieces to show off. So I hope you guys have learned a little bit more about coral. It's still, marine sciences is still something that I myself am learning about more and more every day, totally because of your guys' enthusiasm and curiosity. So if you have any more information, please share it. That's what our community is for, is sharing knowledge about all of the amazing things out in the natural world. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time for another Specimen Saturday. And remember, stay curious. Bye-bye, guys.